and welcome to our ongoing series on COVID. In this edition, we talk about COVID and food, what to eat, what not to eat. We also have a COVID diet chart for you. In this edition of HD's talk show, The Interview, we speak to Rujuta Devikar, well-known nutritionist. By the way, she's also the one who led Bollywood's Karina Kapoor to a size zero. Welcome to the show, Rujuta, and thank you for being with us. Thank you very much. The pleasure is all mine. I, for one, call you what is a common sense nutritionist. And you have often spoken about not letting go of one's common sense. What would your advice be to COVID patients? So I feel that common sense is essentially stuff that is simple, that is sustainable. And because it is simple to do and it is sustainable in nature, it is therefore also scientific to stick it out to your common sense. So what would your advice be to COVID patients when it comes to common sense? Don't let the fear mongering get to you. You know, I had an infectious disease specialist a few days ago on my Insta Live, and he said one of the recommendations that I have is for people to delete their WhatsApp because most min misinformation and most fear mongering happens over these WhatsApp chats. So if anything's coming with a hashtag, be like really uh, sure about not doing it, you know, so uh, be very skeptical about hashtags. Second uh, advice that I would have is to stick it out with your routine, you know, do what you're doing at home, follow the basic COVID protocol. And I think follow authentic advice, which is coming from a professional. And uh, the third thing would be simply continue to eat home cooked food. You know, you spoke about food. Now coming yep. to the key issue of food. What would you advise a COVID patient? What would be your diet chart? What to eat, what not to eat? You know, I think of a diet chart almost like a marriage, you know, because it is our, our food and us. We, uh, that's probably the most intimate relationship that we uh, have with anyone outside of us is with food. So uh, just like you're hoping that your marriage will last you in sickness and in health, you know, that's what a good partnership is all about. I think when we are thinking about food, that's what we need to think about, that this food should work for me in my illness and it should work for me when I'm in uh, good health, you know. So that's the first thing, that it needs to be adaptable to every situation. When I'm at my thrive in terms of health and when I'm feeling a little under the weather, even at that time, it needs to work for me. The second thing is, and I've often, I never tire of saying this, eat local, eat seasonal, eat traditional. It has to be food just a naam aapko pata ho. It has to be food jo aapke baju ke mandi mein milta ho. And it has to be food jo aap, aapke kitchen mein, according to your dadi and nani ka time tested, orally handed over recipes aap banayi hai, aur wahi khai hai. And don't fall for anything just because it is exotic, expensive, or unpronounceable. Third Just give advice, me a few examples on this. Now you find a lot of things being positioned as, uh, you know, hashtag immunity boosters, whether it is a juice which is uh, coming out of a packet, whether it is some seeds that they want you to eat, or whether it is simply your homegrown spices, but uh, the industry wanting you to eat in like some humongous amounts for... Uh, a perceived benefit. So I think we need to be very careful about uh, these positioning, junk food, which is positioning itself as uh, healthy food, especially in the time of crisis like this. So, um, and exotic stuff like iska juice pilo, yeah, you know, uh, kinawa khao, rice chordo. So we always have to be very, very skeptical about these things. And the last thing that I would really like to say, because these are the kind of emails that I receive and, you know, um, is that even for people who are doing kadhas, because, you know, the ones who have had COVID have almost kind of gone on to kadhas and then later... Uh, you know, they seem to have things like acidity, blisters, indigestion issues and stuff because they're just doing kadas in like some big amounts, you know. So don't overdose on anything. If 
even when a kada is working it's working in this much amount so you don't need to spend the rest of your day drinking that kada or uh, drinking hot water what would be a ideal diet chart for a covid patient well an ideal diet chart would be um, you know and this is probably an ideal diet chart for all of us out there um don't start your day with chai or coffee and you know i i think there are four s's that we should not start our day with a stimulant a shot a seed or a smoothie you know we have to be very careful about not starting our days with these things because uh, this is again the whole repackaged junk food that i was talking about uh you know people starting their day with a stimulant like just chai se chalu kar diya ya black coffee se ya green tea se chalu kar diya um uh, ya fir uh, koi seeds whether it is a methi seed or whatever usse chalu kar diya koi juice pee liya you know uh, kale avocado ya whatever ka ya giloi aajkal you know they will just start with the that juice so i think it is important to start your day with um, with fruit or with nuts because that is what you would typically do have a hot homemade breakfast whether it is a poha upma idli dosa paratha ragi porridge ragi dosa you know anything that you would like make sure that you're not having uh, not skipping your uh, breakfast and the third thing is to stay well hydrated through the day you know uh, abhi is mausam mein there are uh, you know you can have a nimbu sharbat to stay well hydrated you can have a chhas to stay well hydrated you could even have a bel sharbat to stay well hydrated so aapke ghar pe banaya hua you know one glass nice sharbat you can have and drink water regular water through the day to stay well hydrated have moong dal khichdi for uh, dinner you know that has been one of india's time tested recipes for a quick recovery from any kind of an illness whether it is a flu or whether it is a bad stomach because you went out on uh, shadis or when you return home from long travel one of the things that helps settle your stomach that gives you a good night's sleep and can also help you stoke your appetite is a well made moong dal khichdi you know and make it at home put a teaspoon of ghee on it and uh, eat it because that is something which always works because right now what's happening is that people who are sick or even the ones who are recovering are uh, not getting adequate sleep because wo log ko neend hi nahi aa rahi hai ya they are having digestion issues some people are having diarrhea others are having constipation burping all the time and stuff and one is also feeling restless in one's mind khichdi is one of our uh, super meals you know two things from what you said one theory is have a very light dinner soup and toast the other mm. with what you said about appetite eat well wholesome breakfast now yeah. a covid patient normally is very low on appetite and there is no taste so how do you combat these two rice is in fact something which also works as a prebiotic a prebiotic is a food which is good or food for probiotic or the healthy bacteria in your stomach so one of the reasons why we also begin to lose our appetite and stuff is because when one takes medicines or when one is feeling low there are also changes to the gut bacteria so a meal like khichdi that you've taken with a teaspoon of ghee will allow you to uh, you know also makes your gut bacteria feels uh, feel happy because it's like okay there uh, this is food that we can eat too this is food that we recognize and uh, khichdi is also very much a light meal if we begin to think of only soup and toast as a light meal then it's only because that's how much the weight loss industry has brainwashed us the weight loss industry constantly tells us that if you are not depriving yourself if you are not eating stuff which you have never eaten and uh, if you are not eating in combinations which you haven't seen then there is then it's not going to work agar hum log kabhi soup peete bhi hai to i think it is more kanji uh type of a soup you know which then in our head we don't even think of a rice kanji uh as a soup we are only thinking of vegetables ka soup as a uh, soup so no i don't think that we must uh, have a soup and uh, toast i think a khichdi is a good idea so basically what you are saying is eat what your body has been used to in your years of growing up which oh, in yes. the indian context really means roti dal chawal yeah 
roti sabzi dal chawal those kind of things yes that is pretty much what it uh, means for us a matri you know that is also something which makes people feel good and it's a much healthier option a homemade matri is a much healthier option than a store bought biscuit so uh, i think sometimes it's just about rediscovering the wisdom of our kitchen and if there is one thing that the pandemic has done i think it's really put the spotlight back on to our uh, kitchens you know and i do hope that uh, we remember this lesson for the rest of our lives that food which we cook at home is not going to cause harm to our health or to our hormones so we should uh, just optimize our kitchen and not let it be one corner in the house which we never use you know you spoke about eating dal chawal now for diabetics normally rice is a complete no no is that a myth oh yes you know because uh, if you are eating your rice along with uh, your kadhi or with uh, rajma chole like the way it's eaten or with dal or in the form of a khichdi then it's not going to cause you diabetes what i find most interesting is that diabetics or people with diabetes are scared of rice but are not scared of eating biscuits you know uh, they are actually encouraged by so many health professionals to eat two biscuits every day with their cup of chai uh, they are encouraged to yeah once in a while you can have your drink that's not a problem so i think what we one what one needs to understand is whether we have blood sugar issues or we don't have blood sugar issues whether we have obesity or we don't have obesity whether we have covid right now or we don't have covid right now we have to stay away from ultra processed packaged foods you know you also spoke about ghee and you are a great advocate of consuming ghee would you advise that to covid patients now the thing with ghee and very interestingly again with covid is uh, people with covid are complaining of uh, stomach issues and uh, stuff and ghee is something which aids digestion ghee is also something which allows you to have a sense of calm and ghee provides our body with essential fatty acids so assimilation of certain nutrients you know like nutrients like vitamin d like vitamin a which are currently in highlight for uh, hashtag #immunity boosting and stuff it becomes easier so ghee ka yahi hai that no one hamare gharon mein aake ye koi nahi kehta that you know agar aap ek chamach isme daloge aapke regular khane mein on your dal chawal or on your roti then it will become easier for you to assimilate vitamin d it will become easier for you to uh, assimilate vitamin a uh, we've never really spoken about food in terms of nutrients as far as traditional wisdom goes and now the latest in terms of like food business is only to talk about foods in terms of nutrients and that's how they land up selling you know these pills and potions which people think of as a quick fix the fact is that there is no quick fix uh, rome wasn't built in a day immunity is not going to be built in a day either eat your ghee it doesn't just help as an agent which helps you stay calm or which allows you to digest your food better but it is also something which allows you to assimilate nutrients better so that way the next time there is a pandemic you are not falling short on vitamins and minerals and stuff your daily diet becomes robust enough to supply you with all of the nutrients you know including the vitamins and uh, minerals that we are currently uh, on a rampage you know we've gone on a rampage buying all of these things even if you look at the amount of fatigue that people are experiencing post covid or during covid if they just added like a teaspoon of ghee to their lunch or to their dinner you know to the simple meals that they were eating then it allows for energy metabolism also to happen more optimally so two things one wouldn't using too much ghee add to your weight second if it is ghee are you saying rice bran oil olive oil mustard oil etc etc complete no no well i'm saying ghee and in amounts that it is always been used so we all we have like an unspoken uh you know 
quantity like an unspoken wisdom about how much ghee needs to be used depending on what one is eating so if you ate uh, let's say a makai roti or a bajra roti which are considered to be tougher to digest then you add a little more ghee if you are eating a regular dal khichdi then it's just about a teaspoon of ghee if you ate a dal bati it is much more than a few teaspoons of ghee if you ate a puran puri it is much more than you know uh, just two or three teaspoons of ghee so depending on what one eats you know we already know ki kaun se khane ko kitna ghee lagta hai and we don't have to be dietitians or nutritionists or health professionals or whatever to know this this belongs to our collective wisdom so rujuta that is good news for many of our listeners you know to say five spoons of ghee are allowed per day yeah i mean i think that is as much that we would land up eating i'm i'm just saying agar aapne paratha kha liya fir roti sabzi kha li aur fir dal khichdi khaya you know to mimel ke pura din mein you would land up eating anywhere between 2 to 5 teaspoons but at least you are getting good taste you are satisfied with what you are eating khane ke baad otherwise hum log ghee nikal dete hain you know with pride we say ke hum log main to sukhi roti khati hu aur fir lunch ke baad mein kuch meetha dhoongte hain और ये फिर हर रोज करते हैं यू नो दैट आई वांट सम मिठाई आफ्टर माय लंच और आफ्टर माय डिनर बिकॉज दैट होल सटाइटी और दैट होल यू नो ऑप्टिमम डाइजेशन इज बीइंग लॉस्ट बाय रिमूविंग इंग्रेडिएंट्स व्हिच हैव ऑलवेज बीन अ पार्ट ऑफ दिस ट्रेडिशनल कॉम्बिनेशन सो वी कैन नॉट रिमूव घी व्हाट अबाउट ऑलिव ऑयल एंड राइस ब्रान ऑयल the reason why you find so much olive oil across india is because uh, the you know the european union which supports uh, uh, olive oil actually saw india as an emerging market and uh, this behavior that affluent people of developing economies adopt the imported very quickly is something uh, you know is a behavior that everyone has seen it is something that the food industry uses to its advantage so uh, you know for people like me i mean i've i've uh, i've i had emails almost about 10 years ago saying come on and uh, you know show people how to cook indian food using olive oil and we'll, this is what we can give you or this is what we will offer these are the typical ways in which the food industry works uh, you know i think we have to be again going back to our common sense and saying to ourselves that theek hai you know we have always eaten in kacche ghani ka oils why should we change that today so uh, it's always better to not have refined oils and to stick it out with uh, with the cooking mediums that we have always used so post covid what should be a ideal diet chart for a person to regain strength and to get back one's appetite when it comes to food an ideal diet again is a diet which is in the season it is easy to make at home it is easy to digest that is what one needs to do uh, post covid don't do anything exotic don't overeat anything eat your normal ghar ka khana and you will be in more than a safe zone and how should a covid patient build one's appetite because that's a major issue with covid patients you know yeah yeah i think again it has to be one step at a time you know uh, make sure that you're drinking enough water because so that the appetite comes back slowly over a period of time don't be in a big rush over a period of time aapka appetite aa jayega and eat familiar food I remember the last time when we were talking you said one of the people that you interviewed he said I ate aloo paratha you know I was just uh, coming to that <laughs> yeah I think it was an oncologist right so um and it helped him feel better eating familiar food you know eating food which you have grown up eating really has the power to help you feel better it strokes your appetite back we must use familiar foods to our advantage and eat more home cooked food or so to say even our favorite foods you know which then allow the appetite to come back in fact you were referring to this oncologist who i was talking to and he used a very interesting term he said yes. health junk food <laughs> so what would you say to that and he said i regained my strength because i ate aloo puri and aloo paratha 
Oh, very nice. Beautiful diet. I think it's the same. It's if you keep it basic and commonsensical, then you don't feel scared of eating from your own home. You know, so you do know that uh, the alu paratha is not going to be any kind of or bring any kind of a damage to your body, but it will help you bring your appetite back. And then it will help you get back to normal as quickly as uh, possible. The only thing that we should really watch out for are junk foods which are parading themselves as healthy food. You know, so my definition of healthy junk food would be a little different from the good doctor that uh, you interviewed. And I would say that healthy junk food is ultra processed food, but which is promoting itself or positioning itself as healthy food because it is either protein rich or vitamin rich or immunity boosting or vitamin C rich or vitamin D rich or whatever. What would you advise COVID patients who have food allergies? Is to respect those food allergies at that point of time and eat within, uh, you know, within the foods that they know that they tolerate quite well. So this is not the time to get uh, adventurous with food. You go with the tried and tested formulas that work for you. You know, most nutritionists say, eat when hungry. You say, eat before you are hungry. So you're breaking a lot of myths. Oh, I think, uh, you know, logo ki life aaj kal aisi ho gai hai that a lot of times people don't even realize when they are hungry and then by the time they recognize that they are actually hungry they eat so much that they don't know where to stop eating so we are actually losing sensitivity at both ends we are losing our sensitivity to our hunger and we are also losing our sensitivity to our uh, satiety so eating before getting hungry really is just about eating on time so don't push it till a be I can't bear this anymore and I'm going to go mad. I need a chocolate cake or I need to eat something right now. Because by that time, you're already acidic. You're already bloated. You know, you're laying foundation for like uh, being constipated for the next couple of days. So eat on time. You know, there was wisdom in uh, people eating their breakfast, lunch, dinner. And they, you know, eating it at a certain time or before a certain time because it helped them stay in good health. What would you recommend for COVID patients to build their immunity? I think post-COVID, we need to get back to really uncomplicating the whole act of eating, to committing ourselves to a regular exercise routine, to following a proper bedtime routine, and to not run after immunity or weight loss or anything like that. You know, one theory is eat greens, eat fruits, but then isn't home cooked food or cooked food better mm. considering that the chances of the virus settling down really are very low there. So what would you recommend? Yes, cooked food is always a safe bet and it is always better to eat a fruit rather than make it into a juice. To make a sabzi out of a vegetable instead of having it as a juice. Um, yeah, you know, so the more you chew your food, the more you eat it in traditional combinations, the more you safeguard your health. Otherwise, ye soups or salads or smoothie ke chakkar mein, hum log apni health gawa dete hai. So, are home deliveries safe during the pandemic? Well, at least, uh, you know, uh, technically, yes, home deliveries are supposed to be uh, safe. But uh, like I was telling you earlier, that if if 10 years ago, I was getting, uh, you know, emails from, let's say, these uh, refined oils saying, you know, come and do this for us. Now, the latest you know, food deliveries are also now in this whole process because like I said, it's like every crisis is, is a business opportunity for someone else or the other. Or, um, you know, har koi haat dhona chata hai bheti ganga mein. It's one of those things. And now I do know for a fact that there are these big food delivery giants who are thinking of building hashtag COVID curated menus, hashtag nutrition line, hashtag all of those things because 
what everyone understands from our current behaviors is that we are choosing foods which are positioning themselves as nutrient rich and we are beginning to believe that this nutrient rich is not going to come from my own home or my own food we are choosing foods which is positioning itself as good for covid you know so covid curation nutrition lines all these are going to be uh, you know i guess i don't know what they call it in business terms but some of the other horizontals or verticals that uh, they are going to build but eating home cooked food and staying common sensical with your approach towards life is the only way to pandemic proof your life is the only way to stay healthy you know through this crisis and uh, beyond it also but you know there are some people who have the challenges they don't have anyone or they themselves probably cannot do home food or cook it at this point in time so for them are home deliveries safe and then what kind well uh, you know like i said technically home deliveries are safe but if you are capable of cooking uh, you know your meals then you must just cook them at your home another shift that needs to happen is you know if at the government level we are talking about regulation of junk food and uh protection of green spaces and regulation of air quality then i think at a family level we need to talk about making our kitchens more gender neutral you know because we tend to like eat more from outside also when only one gender bears the whole uh, labor of cooking so we need more men in the kitchen to have better access to good food but of course for all those who are on their own and for uh, health reasons or because of old age and stuff are unable to cook and cook for themselves i would recommend uh, getting food from a smaller tiffin service you know where you know that the kitchen is not very large and uh, you know or a small women's cooperative which has about 10 or 20 dabbas that they're doing every day because the lesser number of people that you cook for the richer the food is in terms of uh, nutrients you know another thing which is happening is mm-hmm. and one of the theories is have vitamin c have zinc so everyone routinely is popping in pills what is the logic and what would you say to that well the logic is that it seems to be very good for business to have these kind of things going around that if you just pop a pill it's going to uh, be good for you but of course there is there is nothing scientific in there you know these are more uh, profit and business driven decisions and more fear mongering you know today when the whole janta is scared if you did tell them that having this in copious amounts is going to help then they land up taking it now as far as nutrition science goes you know nutrition science has made itself very very clear on the fact that anyone who's talking about food in terms of nutrients vitamin c folic acid amino acids you know this omega 3 fatty acids nine omega omega 9 fatty acids i mean all of this is not scientific there is a term for it it's called nutritionism it's like uh, ageism sexism classism you know it's like any otherism it's about choosing certain products because they are rich in a kind of nutrients when people talk of food in terms of nutrients um we tend to forget or we tend to overlook the fact that there could be the same nutrient in my home cooked food aaj vitamin c ka itna rage hai but traditionally agar hum nimbu sharbat le rahe hai ya avla sharbat le rahe hai to usme bhi vitamin c hai but we don't see vitamin c in it we we'll end up seeing one teaspoon of sugar in that and we don't mind popping a pill so i think the way we view our food has to change i think i know the answer to my next question but i will still ask are there any anti virus foods particularly during covid well you know i ma'am like over the last one year i have seen anti viral jhadu anti viral pocha anti viral lipstick anti viral face cream but there is no such thing as an anti viral food or an anti viral diet it uh, 
you know it is it again all boils down to eating a more diverse diet which changes every season you know which changes according to the location that you are in and which changes according uh, to the tradition that uh, you belong to so just eating that kind of food is not just antiviral i would like to call it antibacterial anti inflammatory anti aging anti uh, silliness anti everything you know so um so yeah it, uh, there is no such thing as an anti bacterial or antiviral food as i said i thought i knew the answer <laughs> but however what would you advise a covid patient who's overweight i would really strongly advise them to adopt long lasting habits that allow them to get fitter and healthier and lose weight as a consequence of building better health and building better fitness so don't be in a mad rush to lose weight but work at losing your weight in a way that stays down for the rest of your life so a safe way to lose weight is supposed to be losing about 10% of your body weight over a year's time now if you actually did that so which means if you were 100 kilos then you're thinking about losing 10 kilos over the next one year you know so when you have more realistic targets of knocking off weight in a easy manner then you don't land up doing anything in your day to day life which will get the weight to bounce off otherwise all that i see is that people do really unsustainable things and uh, really drastic things which they know they will not be able to do beyond 2 days par wo log will power laga ke 2 weeks 2 months ke liye kar dete hain then you come back to what one describes as normal food or normal routine and then if you have lost 5 kilos in those 2 months you are gaining 10 kilos over the next 2 weeks and then this cycle just keeps repeating itself so instead of going through that vicious cycle this time adopt a more sensible sustainable and simpler routine and work at losing weight as a consequence of improved health so take it slow take it easy and uh, know that body weight is not a measure of fatness or uh, fitness so lose your weight over a period of time you know 3 saal ke baad mein you should be leaner than what you are today you know so that's how we have to look at our life there is no shortcut to weight loss you know you go against the grain when it comes to fats whether it is uh, high protein dairy free etc etc just explain that see i said it's it it is not just something which which appeals to one's common sense or it is not just something which is in sync with our collective wisdom about food but it is also something which is now uh, you know which is now nutrition guidelines even for uh, you know western countries like the us or canada or even the european union where no one now is talking about food in terms of nutrients you know they are going through what they call as a fbdg which is called as a food based dietary guideline because if i said to you eat dal chawal you know because you've been eating it you know exactly what you do what to do or if i said to you aap ghar par khana khao you know exactly what you do if i said to you aap protein rich khana khao jisme itne matra mein omega 3 ho or you know that much of omega 6 and uh, you know make sure that your fat doesn't go beyond 25 grams you don't know what to do other than seeking out professional help or having meals from some food delivery place which is giving you these so called healthy uh, meals so talking about foods in terms of nutrients is looking at a very very small thing that food provides it is completely ignoring uh, you know the wisdom of culture cuisine climate and it is just a way to monetize people's vulnerabilities so uh, therefore it is not advisable to eat any kind of a hashtag food which is whether it's hashtag protein rich hashtag dairy free hashtag gluten free hashtag whatever hashtags can allow you to position your products at 40% higher aap normal bread le sakte ho 10 rupaye mein mila aap gluten free bread aap 40% markup pe bech sakte ho so other than that it's not go- personally for your and my health or collectively for the health of a society it's not going to do anything so uh, maybe it can only damage it in the long run 
you know, you spoke about gluten-free diet, and I was coming to that actually. How mm. overrated is a gluten-free diet? And there are claims that it cures cancer. Laughable though, but yeah. I told you there are like all kinds of claims, right? It's like bus ye band karlo to wo chala jayega. That's like everyone's uh, favorite claim. Ye can be anything. It can be gluten. It can be dairy. It can be sugar. And wo can be jo chala jata hai can be anything. Any disease. आपको जो मन है आप उसका वहाँ पर नाम लगा सकते हो. And supposedly the disease uh, goes away. Only in case of what is known now as the celiac disease is, uh, you know, is. digesting wheat actually a problem but otherwise for all of us regular people you know who have always eaten a roti who have always had a khakra who have always had a matri there is no problem at all with gluten i mean on the one hand we are constantly looking for foods which are rich in protein on the other hand uh, you know we forget that gluten that gluten is also nothing it's just an amino acid so it's a form of protein only so uh, as long as you are eating your rotis in your traditional combinations as long as your uh, kada prasad is being made in the traditional combination that it is meant to be made in no gluten on earth is going to trouble your digestive system i think that's something that uh, we must remember of course uh, if it is uh, if if you have celiac disease it's another matter altogether but it's not a shortcut to weight loss or, or you know staying free from any kind of a disease or anything like that so for normal people you would not say gluten free diet is a must because i, I see a lot of people who don't have celiac or are don't are not allergic to wheat but they are going on a gluten free diet yeah i think because all of us are looking for a quick fix you know and then we feel that chalo gluten uh, band kar dete hain but nahi gluten band karke you are not going to uh, lose weight any faster than what you did if you simply ate home cooked food exercised and slept on time but you know a lot of them who are not on gluten or who are on a gluten free diet are not doing it necessarily to lose weight they say it is a way to being healthy no that's not true you know removing an ingredient which has always been a part of your diet you know uh, we've eaten parathas we've like i said matris we have eaten we have had shankar paras which have been a part of the diwali or uh, delicacies that one uh, ate gluten i mean wheat has been a part of our diet the problem is that instead of calling our foods by the names that they are actually known by हमको शंकर पारे में या रोटी में या पराठे में ग्लूटन दिखने लगा है सो दैट इज द प्रॉब्लम हियर एंड नॉट रियली द पराठा इज नॉट द प्रॉब्लम द रोटी इज नॉट द प्रॉब्लम यू नो ऑफ लेट डाइट हैज बिकम अ डर्टी वर्ड सो मोस्ट डाइटिशियंस आर कॉलिंग देमसेल्व्स न्यूट्रिशनिस्ट्स एंड रीपैकेजिंग व्हाट दे वर सेलिंग अर्लियर well uh, you know people are calling themselves nutritionist holistic medicine uh, naturalist all kinds of things but you're right what they're doing at the end of the day is the same thing they're driving home fear for home cooked food they're asking you to deprive yourself for foods that you have enjoyed or uh, you know uh, yeah they're asking you to deprive yourself and they are asking you to eat out of their products and packages either the ones that they are making themselves or the ones that they are endorsing covertly uh, so this is just i think the new business strategy on the block it's nothing else it's nothing that the weight loss industry has not seen it's nothing that all of us as regular people have uh, not seen and uh, just like the weight loss industry needs a new villain every 5 years you know 1990s mein gluten problem nahi tha you know 2000 mid 2000 se gluten problem hone laga 1990s mein ghee problematic tha 2022 mein log ghee ke shots le rahe hain so we need a new villain in terms of food every time we need a new solution in terms of food every time and similarly we need a uh, new packaging for uh, for the weight loss professionals every time so 
that's all that it is i remember years ago in 2012 i was at a food at a nutrition conference and i there was this food scientist and he was uh, he when he, when it was his chance to speak at the podium he said uh the reason why we were looking at food from a molecular level and you know even looking at food from protein carbohydrate fat is to really help the common person make better decisions but he said today the common person is more confused than ever about what to eat and the only people who have profited from this whole thing is the food industry so the thing is that with all of these hashtags these hashtags are simply used to price the products higher or to mark up the price so you have regular bread which is let's say at whatever price you sell it with hashtag gluten free you have at least a 40% uh, mark up you know you sell it hashtag amino acids rich you can mark it up even by another 50% so all these are simply used for business these are profit these hashtags serve better serve profits better and uh, not people you know finally about allergy tests now at a drop of a hat nutritionists say go get a food allergy test go get a gluten allergy test what does all that mean well uh, you know like in every industry there are kickbacks for uh, getting your people to do a uh, blood test and as many tests as possible whether it is an allergy test or whether it is get mapping your gut bacteria or any of the the more exotic it gets the bigger uh, the kickback so uh that's you know like they say it's it's business as usual the fact is that if someone was actually allergic to something they would know it you know uh if you were allergic like i am allergic to methi for example you know i never went through a test i just know that every time i eat it i don't feel right in my stomach uh there are many others out there who know that uh ye kha ke i don't feel good or high feel squeezy in my stomach ya meri raaton ki neend ud jati almost all of us know that if we did have a cup of tea or coffee after 4 or 5 in the evening our sleep quality is poorer so it is about paying more attention to your life than getting everything uh checked and uh, tested and counting everything but we've now turned into this population where uh, how well you have slept ke liye bhi hum log watch pehente hai you know you ask someone did you sleep well they say like yeah i slept you know watch batata hai how well you slept watch batata hai aapne kitna khana khaya watch batata hai aap kitna chale so we really again need to go back to uh, basics and use a more common sensical approach and uh, not fall for uh, these tests and mapping and stuff where it's completely uncalled for and finally how did you lead karina kapoor to a size zero oh <laughs> well actually i simply led karina kapoor towards a more sensible uh, routine with her diet and uh, you know with her exercise when i started working with her on her diet it was in 2007 it's 2021 she continues to eat well work well uh, and stuff so all i let her to was a sustainable diet now that led to weight loss and it is the media who coined the term uh, size zero thanks to them coining the term i got a bit of limelight and popularity nahi to mujhe koi puch nahi raha tha uske pehle but this wasn't my doing or even karina kapoor's uh, doing this is about uh, like everything gets packaged and positioned i think this is probably how the movie got uh, positioned you know uh, for karina's weight loss uh, that's that's really the story behind it so it's a media made uh, term it doesn't exist in real life Rujita Divikar thank you very much this has been indeed a very very useful conversation thank, thank you for you. being with us and thank you for your time thank you very much pleasure is all by thanks